Yo, what up? It's King Sticks. In this video, I'm going to be showing you five godly Warwick mechanics you should know and understand if you want to be good at Weedwick. Even if you don't want to play Warwick, you should watch this video. That way, you'll better understand how to play with Warwick and against Warwick. Before we jump into the first core Warwick mechanic, you need to understand his passive. The rest of his abilities play nicely into his passive, and most people don't realize that Warwick loves to fight when he's low on HP. That's when he's strongest. Warwick is strongest whenever he is low on HP. If you're trying to measure out a fight, the lower Warwick gets on health. That is when the fight gets very difficult. So if your abilities are down and Warwick is low on health, you're probably going to want to run. Warwick gets insane healing off of his passives on his auto attack and Q whenever he's below half HP and when he is below 25% HP this healing gets even crazier. Speaking of crazy, I have some crazy good news. I'm super excited to announce that I partnered up with LolWiz to make this video. Getting a competitive edge is all about information. LolWiz gives you that information before each and every game. See stats of the best performing champions, get valuable counter ban information, import high performing rune pages during champ select with just one click, scout enemies and allies to know exactly what to expect from them and to also form a strategy going into the game. With LolWiz, you can spend those critical pre-game minutes analyzing your matchup instead of pulling up three browser tabs and two apps trying to get the necessary info. LolWiz also supports teamfight tactics. If you're serious about growing as a player and increasing your chances of winning, LolWiz is 100% free. So make sure to download it. Link down in the description below. Join the 1.6 million players already using LolWiz and go dominate the rift. And back to the Warwick mechanics. The first Warwick mechanic and the most important one is his Q. His Q has a lot of different aspects, which is why it's so situational and how you use it. The first core aspect of what his Q is, is an auto attack resetter. If you auto attack somebody on Warwick and then Q them, the duration in which you're queuing them still counts towards Warwick's next auto attack. So if you're auto attacking once every second and your Q takes a half a second to cast, you can auto attack Q and then your auto attack will be up in half a second. Warwick's Q is also a gap closer. It has more range than his auto attacks. So if an enemy is running away from you, you want to hold on to your Q until they're outside of your auto attack range. That way you can immediately Q onto them to stay on top of them. In those situations, you are going to want to hold down your Q. If you just press your Q, it's a bite. If you hold it down, you'll attach to them and swing around back behind them, which will help you stay on top of them. The majority of the time you're going to want to hold it down to swing across. The only time you want to just do a normal bite is if you're underneath an enemy turret and you know your Q has the damage to kill them on its own. So you're just running in for a quick bite and then running off. That's the only time you typically want to do just a normal Q. When the enemies are running away from you and you're on top of them auto attacking, especially if they're running towards a wall, make sure you have your cursor hovered over them and a finger hovering over your Q key. That way you can use it immediately and you can attach and stay onto them. This is very frustrating for a lot of players and why they love to bash Warwick as a champion. When you're trying to escape from a good Warwick, even if you flash, he'll stay right on top of you and you'll be screwed. This is even easier if an enemy has a dash in their ability especially if the dash has a long animation. Rather than anticipating a flash, you can use your Q attach more as a reaction to their action. For example, a Kha'Zix jump or a Tristana jump has a really long startup time. So if you're attacking them and then if they start their jump animation, hold down your Q on top of them and you'll swing the whole way with them and you'll be where their jump ends. You'll be on top of them and you're going to wreck them. If you're in a situation where an enemy is fighting you to the death, it's usually best to hold on to your Q for as long as possible because you're going to scare them when you use it. it has has a lot of healing when you use it and it does a lot of damage so if you use it too early you're gonna spook them and then they're gonna run and then your Q is gonna be on cooldown so it's gonna be hard to stay on top of them swing on top of them catch their flash etc so if you're in a fight to the death try to save it for as long as possible try not to use it before you drop below 25% HP if it is a 1v1 to the death like level 3 against an Udi or something like that saving it as long as possible without getting yourself killed is huge Warwick's Q per level doesn't get any lower on cooldown and the damage it increases by is very marginal which is why you don't really want to max it first you want to max it second we can still get its full utility as an auto attack resetter as a gap closer and as an attachment without needing to max it. One final aspect of Warwick's Q that is extremely useful is you can use it to avoid many forms of CC in the form of knockups, 
knockaways, and displacements in general. For example, if Trundle's popping his pillar on you and you can reach him with your Q, you can just hold down your Q and blow right through that CC. Same thing with the Blitzcrank knockup, Alstar knockup, Alstar headbutt, Rakan knockup, any kind of displacement, you can negate it if you're using your Q on Warwick, which is why it's also usually best to use the full Q hold down attachment since it will increase your duration that you are avoiding these displacement CCs. If you're in a fight with someone like Blitzcrank, you'd want to save your Q until he starts his knockup animation and then you'd hold down your Q on top of him to avoid that CC. Yes, you will still be taking the damage from these knockup or knockback displacement abilities. However, you will be avoiding the CC aspect of them. Once you get the hang of using Warwick's Q properly in an array of given situations, you'll be able to outplay most opponents really hard, and you'll also be able to secure many kills. The second core Warwick mechanic that I want to talk about is his W. It is nearly as versatile as Warwick's Q, and it is super important to understand. If Warwick has vision through any means of an enemy dropping below half HP, he gets a huge movement speed bonus and attack speed bonus against that person. When this happens, there is a blood trail between you and that person, leading it straight from you to them. So even if they step out of vision and they're below half HP, you'll still know exactly where they are and where they're going. Once they get above half HP, even if you can't see them, you will lose the movement speed and attack speed against them. However, the blood trail itself will linger. It will get a little fainter, but it lingers. So even if they start moving, even though you lost the movement speed and attack speed, you'll still get an idea of where they're going and where they've been. The attack speed and movement speed bonus gets even stronger if the target is below 20% HP. This gives Warwick a lot of options when it comes to ganking. For a normal champion, if you are on the bot side of the map, but there's a good gank top lane, oftentimes you won't be going for it. However, on Warwick and that gank, if the enemy top lane has 20% health or less, you could get there realistically very quickly and secure the kill. This doesn't mean you should do that in every situation. You should look at them, read the situation, decide or not if they're gonna back. And if it makes sense, then obviously go for it, but in general this gives you a lot of global map options. The second aspect of this second mechanic that I really want to stress to you guys is the active. The active is stronger than ever. There's been a lot of bug fixes on it and honestly they added a whole lot of strength to it while at the same time calling a bug fix even though it wasn't. Basically whenever you activate Warwick's blood hunt the closest enemy champion to where you are you'll have your blood hunt on for eight seconds. During those eight seconds, you will get increased movement speed and attack speed against that opponent. That's right, you heard me, increased attack speed as well, even if they are full HP for eight seconds. This means if you are in a one-on-one -on -one situation, even if you're both full HP, if you can press your W before you start fighting them, you'll get an insane advantage in that fight since you'll have so much attack speed and so much movement speed towards that person. This is really useful in mid and low elo where people don't realize this. Even in higher elo, a lot of people don't know it. It's also very, very powerful if you're in a bush and an enemy's walking towards you and right are about to enter the bush, you use your W and then you just absolutely murder them. In a gank situation, you don't want to use your W until you're completely behind the enemy because if you use it too soon, they'll panic and then immediately start the run before they can even see you, which defeats the whole purpose of ganking to begin with. So just make sure you're behind them, slightly out of their vision, then use it. By the time they react to your W, they'll already be able to see you anyways and you'll be moving really fast already coming up behind them. You'll still be getting the minimum attack speed bonus and moving Move speed bonus for eight seconds off of your W's active. If you take damage from a champion, you will lose your bonus move speed for about a second and then it will slowly build back up every 0.25 seconds. So if you're moving really fast at somebody, let's say Ash, and she hits you with her ice volley of arrows, you'll get very slowed, you'll lose your bonus movement speed, and you probably won't be able to catch back up to her because by the time you do, so just hit you with her W again. If you are running somebody down and you're running through a turret, turrets won't affect your movement speed. You'll still be moving full speed through the turret fire. It's just champion damage. The third core Warwick mechanic that is super important, guys, is on his E. After you activate his E, you only have two and a half seconds before it goes off no matter what. If you can't make it to that enemy, you're wasting the fear, which is the most important part of his E. This is why in a gank situation or in a situation where an enemy is running away from you, you want to use your E once you're at least within range to Q. That way, the moment you press your E, even if you go to flash, you can Q attach onto them. You don't want to use your E from too far away. Oftentimes, the moment the enemy see you use your E, they'll run in the opposite direction as you and you won't actually get a chance to get any value out of using your E. If you are in a fight to the death of 
somebody, you want to try to save your E for as long as possible. If you use it too soon, the enemies will realize just how tanky you are, you're too difficult to kill, and they'll run away much sooner. It's better used as a bait opportunity. Let yourself get down into your power spike range on your passive below half health, or even better, if you are below 25% HP, you'll be getting way more healing out of your passive and you'll be much more difficult to kill. So it's best to make sure you're staying alive at that 25% HP range rather than hitting 25% HP and then immediately dying when you're at your strongest. Another thing I want to talk about on Warwick's E is it has a lot more range than you think. You can use it on multiple targets quite easily. You can E then flash to proc it on multiple people. You can E Q through somebody to proc it. There's a lot of different ways to use his E. In general though, I don't recommend using E then ultimate because then you won't be getting much value out of it since it immediately ends your E upon landing on your ultimate. I generally like to E them first and then while they're feared, I'll auto them, then ult them while they're still feared so I can't miss my ultimate. Warwick's fourth core mechanic is very similar to his Q's, and that is on his ultimate. Just like with his Q, Warwick's ultimate gives Warwick back a lot of healing as well, and you can also use it to dodge CC. The difference is, on Warwick's ultimate, you can use it to dodge any CC. While you are leaping, you are completely unstoppable. So if you're leaping, you get by a stun, a fear, a silence, it doesn't matter. Your ultimate's gonna go through, and it's gonna land. As long as you've pressed it and it's started, as that CC hits you, it won't matter. In this case, Senna hits me with her root before it has a chance to actually finish rooting me. I ultimate so in midair. You still take the damage, of course, but in this case, I avoided getting snared. The circle that displays how far your ultimate goes is very misleading. His ultimate goes much farther than the circle actually shows by quite a distance. The last thing I want to mention on his ultimate mechanic is you need to be very careful whenever there's multiple enemies around you on who you're trying to ult because if somebody is close behind you you won't be able to ult the person in front of you because Warwick's ult hitbox is pretty big behind himself so if there's someone right behind you you want to ult the guy in front it's just not going to happen you're going to need to make some space first or wait for the guy behind you to move this is also a great tactic if you're trying to peel for one of your carries if you're playing a tank champion try to stay on top of Warwick even if he's moving away from you if you can stay right on top of him behind him he won't be able to ult anyone else the fifth mechanic I want to talk about is Warwick's ult ultimate can go through walls. This is insanely useful and you'll catch a lot of people out by surprise, particularly if you're moving faster. Warwick's ultimate range gets much larger based off of how fast Warwick is moving. So movement speed items tend to be good on him or in general maxing your W is also very good because it gives your ultimate a lot more distance whenever you're using your W active or if somebody is just low on health. As long as your ultimate can reach over the wall, you can go through that wall. It doesn't matter how thick it is. This can be risky at times because if the enemy does see you coming, they might flash it. But in general, if you are moving very fast, your ultimate will land very fast and they won't have time to dodge it. If you're ever worried the enemies are going to dodge your ultimate, just fear them first, then ultimate. That way they can't dodge it. It's also a really strong CC chain. Just try not to waste the CC of your E. You should have enough time to auto them at least once while they're feared and then ultimate. And that is going to wrap up this core Warwick mechanic guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Helps out the YouTube algorithm go we'll grind some more games on your break this holiday season peace boys